this video I'm going to do a comparison between the standard carburetor that came with the generator and the wicking carburetor that I made. I'm going to test the fuel consumption to see if there's any difference and if there's any improvement. So first I'll start out with the standard carburetor and I'll test it under varying loads and then I'll hook up the wicking carburetor again and I'll test that on the same loads. In order to get an accurate comparison I put the air cleaner assembly back on and took all the wicking carburation stuff off. I'll just have that set over to the side. So now we're just at the factory standards now and the factory settings. And what I have over here that we're going to use as a measurement tool is a little tiny uh, fuel tank. This was um, let's see, a tire sealant syringe that was measured out in uh, milliliters and the plan is to time how long it takes to use up 30 milliliters of fuel and I'll use this uh, little iPad on the stopwatch setting to calculate that so I'll start the engine and then when it gets to the 50 milliliter mark I'll start the stopwatch and then I'll stop it when it gets to the 20 milliliter mark and I'll do it under various loads too. What I have here is a, a milk house heater it has two settings on it and I'll go over each one as I'm testing it. 750 watts and 1500 watts. Unfortunately when I removed the wicking carburetor the hose went up against the exhaust manifold and melted it to pieces on the end there. So I'll have to redo this piece when it comes time to test this. Well, the generator is warmed up already, so I just want to add a little gasoline to my little fuel tank. We'll start out with a 750 watt setting on the heater. So I'll start it up and wait till it gets to 50 milliliters and then I'll start the timer. Now I gotta flip on the disconnect switch. And these tests take less than two minutes, so it's pretty easy to do them on this video, but you can skip ahead a little bit if you want if it's too loud. So we'll start the generator. No, test it on the 1500 watt setting. That timer reset. Gas ready. Disconnect switch is off right now. 
And engine switch on. Start the engine.
As you could tell from that video clip, the wick carburetor just couldn't handle that heavier load. That 1500 watt load, in the first few seconds it seemed like it was going to be able to handle it alright, but then I could hear the engine RPM start to drop off, and that's why I cut that uh, test short. I didn't want to get a voltage drop that could potentially damage the alternator, so that's why I stopped the test. I don't think even if I opened that drip valve up a little bit more to get more fuel going through the wick carburetor, I don't, still don't think it would be able to uh, develop enough vapors for that heavier load, because I don't think it would be able to vaporize it fast enough. I think I'd need a bigger wick evaporator to do that. Because even on the smaller load, I could see drops of liquid fuel working its way down the tube into the intake manifold. I don't know if that fuel had condensed on the hose and was working its way down, or if it just passed through everything and stuck to the sides of the hose and working it down. But not all the fuel was being vaporized through the wick carburetor, and there was still some liquid fuel slowly working its way to the intake manifold. So even if I open that uh, drip valve, that fuel drip valve, to get more fuel through there, I don't think it would still handle the load. Going over the numbers a little bit, for the no load I did three runs on each carburetor and the different times I got listed here. And it calculated out to where the wick carburetor is getting 31.8% better longer run time than the standard carb. And with the 750 watt load, I initially did four runs with the standard carburetor and I did three with the wick carburetor and the way this calculated out, I didn't include this one right here, it calculated out to be 38.7% better. This run time seemed a little bit long you know, it's 15 seconds longer than this one. So what I did, I went back and then I did six more runs on the wick carburetor in their different times here, and I got an average of these. And that came out to be 34.7% better. I took those four runs up here and got the average, and took the six runs here and got the average, and it turned out to be 34.7% better. Um, the loads, and with the, the actual wattage measured on that kilowatt meter under the standard carburetor when I was running, it was average about 729 watts. And with the wick carburetor, it's pretty close to the same. The 1500 watt load it was actually, according to the kilowatt meter, it was 1339 watts. In what I had when I checked the wick carburetor when I was tempted to run it, it was drawn 1294 watts, so it was a little bit less. And I didn't get a time on this because the voltage dropped too much. And for the temperature, I was taking the temperature on the exhaust manifold. That's the hottest spot I could find on the exhaust. And it was running with the standard carburetor. I think the high was 749. And with the wick carburetor, I think I seen it up to 769.9. And that was this part of the exhaust manifold right where the gases come out and strike the outside of this tube that lead up into the muffler. That was the hottest spot. The rest of the engine, I can see, got nowhere near close to that temperature. Even the cooling fins around the exhaust manifold, I think, are always under 350. The muffler was around 250, I believe it was, maybe less than 250. And checking down in by the spark plug, that was less than 150. So I don't think the engine was overheating in any place. So I don't think it was running lean. I think it was doing all right. So I'm thinking I would need a bigger wick carburetor in order to handle those heavier loads. 
Looking at the numbers, it might handle a thousand watts maybe, but nothing more than that. This is a two quart mason jar that I got stuffed full of the wicking material. So it had to be something bigger than that. And I think some warmer conditions would also help quite a bit. With all the test runs I did here, it's like 25 to 28 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's below freezing. The gas was cold, the equipment was cold. I don't think the masonry jar with the wicking material ever got over 60 degrees, and that's with the hot air going into it. You know, there just wasn't getting enough heat, I don't think. So like a 70 degree day, I think that would make quite a bit of difference. We get a lot more evaporation going on. Right now the calendar says April, but we're just going through a winter storm right now, and it's just cold. It's more like March, so hopefully it's going to warm up pretty soon. And that's the wind you hear howling right now through the eaves. <laughs>